What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS 18.4 Beta 4 just one week after the release of Beta 3. Now along with this release, we also got the fourth beta for iPadOS 18.4, watchOS 11.4, macOS Sequoia 15.4, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.4, and VisionOS 2.4 for the Vision Pro. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 18.4 Beta 4. So Starting off with the size, I was pretty surprised to see this come in just under one gigabyte. So it came in at 956.3 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. So pretty large jump there for a fourth beta, especially because there's not a ton that's new here. But let's check out the build number because this is where you'll see why it's a little bit larger as well. Maybe part of the reason why. So if you go into your settings, general, about, and then to iOS version, we can see that the new build is 22E5232. A. So we went from an F at the end of the build number on beta 3 to an A here in beta 4. So a nice little jump there in the build number. And if we go back and go down to the modem firmware, that is 1.54.03 on the iPhone 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.4 beta 4? And the first thing has to do with the back tap feature where you double tap to launch an action. As you can see, when I double tap right there to do the back tap, we do not get the banner logo up top that we had anymore. So before in previous betas for the past couple of betas, we've had so when you do the double tap or the back tap right here, you will notice that it gives us this banner up top. However, that has been removed here with beta four. So Apple's actually gone multiple ways with this. So also if you check here in beta three, so if we go into our settings and then we go into our accessibility and then down to touch, and then down to back tap down here in beta three, we got the addition of showing or hiding the banner. So in beta two, I believe in betas one and two, when you would do back tap, you would get the little animation, little banner up there up top to signify that you actually triggered the back tap, you know, functionality, the back tap feature. And then in beta three, they added the banner so that if you wanted to not get that banner notification, you can launch back tap without getting that banner up top. But now in beta four, this feature or this banner up top is just completely removed and we do not have the option to add it back. So if we go into our settings, accessibility, and then down to touch, and then down to back tap, you can see that that option is now missing that was there in beta three. And now we just do not get a banner whatsoever for back tap. And I kind of have mixed feelings about this because you know I was vocal about not liking this little banner up there. It just looked out of place and kind of dated. It didn't really look great on iOS, but I did like the fact that we had the option to turn it off if we don't like it. So apparently Apple did not think so. You know, uh, apparently people didn't like that at all. So it was just completely removed. Maybe it'll come back in the future once Apple can figure out a way to rework and kind of redesign that banner. Now we also have a change in the Apple News application. If you're an Apple News Plus subscriber, so if you go to the following tab in Apple News and then go to food, you will see we have News Plus Food. That is a brand new section here in iOS 18.4 that was introduced in the first beta but we have a change here in beta four. If we go into one of these recipes, we'll just go into this Irish soda bread recipe right here. And you can see we have a minor change here under ingredients. We now have a colon next to yield. So where it says yield eight, before there was no colon there. Now we have a colon next to that to make it a little bit more clear. But everything else appears to be the same here in beta four when it comes to the new Apple News Plus food section, including the colored timers right here, which that was new in beta three, but it remains the same here in beta four. Now we also have a fix for a really strange bug that was found in beta three. And shout out to Naz in the Apple Den Discord server for pointing this out. But if you go into your settings here and then you go into privacy and security and then location services and you go down to the bottom to system services and then we scroll down to improve location accuracy before in beta 3 if you would turn that on and you would go back and then go back into that section and then go down you can see that it would automatically toggle off it would not actually stick when you turned on improve location accuracy but now in beta 4 that has been fixed so when you do toggle it on it stays on as intended and there was also kind of a sign of this as well because you can see that we did not have the little purple icon to the left of the glyph icon even if you turn it on we did not get that little purple icon there like we have back 
here in beta 4. And speaking of bug fixes, beta 4 also appears to fix the bug with notifications. In the notification center, some users in beta 3 and beta 2 had an issue where they could not scroll to the very bottom of their notifications. It would just kind of get cut off and they would not be able to see the last notification. So I only have three notifications right here, but if you have a lot of them and they're kind of stacked up, some users were not able to see that, but they've reported now that that has been fixed in beta 4. And also some users had an issue where the time would overlap an image attachment. So if they had a notification that had an image attached to it, like for my message, sometimes the time of the notification would overlap over top of that image. And that also appears to be fixed with beta 4. And I did also want to mention this as well, because Aaron from Mr. Who's the Boss did point this out. So he was talking about the iPhone's settings menu needs to get a lot smarter because when you search for SIM, nothing would happen. But here in beta 4, I did try that and I searched for SIM and you can see we do actually get results. So I know it's very inconsistent and you know it does not always work great. I admit that the search is not great in iOS as a whole. So it could just be his device here not seeing anything for when you search for SIM. But again, it does, is also pretty inaccurate and kind of inconsistent sometimes. So maybe it's been improved here with beta 4. Maybe not. We'll have to wait and see as time goes on. Now, taking a look at the release notes for beta 4, we do have quite a few resolved issues. So a lot of these were already there previously in beta 3 and betas before that. So you can see the Apple intelligence resolved issues. We do have a new known issue for the Apple Vision Pro application related to 18.4 beta 1. So if you're still on 18.4 beta 1 for whatever reason, the Apple Vision Pro app launches with a black screen if downloaded from the App Store. So basically the only workaround is to update to a new newer version of 18.4 beta two and higher. We do also have that new feature where it says apps with an active live activity can now use nearby interaction in the background to perform ultra wideband ranging. So I've still not found a use case yet where there's an application that can use this feature from the live activity, but I will continue looking for that. And hopefully I find one by the time we get to the final release of 18.4. So I can demonstrate that in a video, but you can see that also, by the way, in your settings and then down to privacy and security. And then if you go down here, to this section right here, you will see we have nearby interactions right there. And this is not new, by the way, this nearby interaction section is not new. It's just that the new feature is related to live activities. And then of course, Apple does mention the resolved issue for notifications where scrolling through notifications might cause them to flicker or collapse momentarily. I had that issue so many times in beta three and previous betas. Some users are still having that in beta four, but Apple did point out in the release notes that it has been resolved. And then everything else in here is the same as beta 3, including the Wi-Fi calling resolved issue and the resolved issue relating to writing tools. Now, as far as the performance goes on iOS 18.4 beta 4, I am currently running a Geekbench test right now. I did not run one earlier because I wanted my device to cool down, but I am expecting the performance to be about the same as it was in beta 3. And beta 3 had pretty solid performance overall. It also fixed a lot of bugs and kind of crashes that I had before. So I'm expecting about the same, potentially even a little bit better. We'll see what we come back with in these scores. Okay, so we scored a 3529 on the single core and 8678 on the multi core. And we can see how that compares to the previous runs right here. So it was a little bit higher actually than beta three as expected, not a huge difference, but it was a tad bit higher there. But as far as day to day performance, I would not really expect a big jump in performance, I think it's going to feel about the same as beta three, even though it scored a little bit higher, but we'll see I will give you guys a follow up on that and also with the battery life. So battery life so far seems good for me. I mean, it's at 87% still. I believe I started the video at 89%, something like that. So battery life seems to be holding up quite well as well. And, you know, we'll wait and see how that fares over the past, over the next week as well. I will give you guys an update on that in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday as I usually do. Okay. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So since we do have an a build and also Apple does not usually release a beta five for a 0.4 update, it's not out of the question, but it's just not typical for Apple. That leads me to believe that we should be seeing the RC build next. So next week is the week of March 24th. And I would expect to see the RC next week. Now, again, there is a slim possibility of seeing a beta five. It's not typically what Apple does, but it is possible. I don't want to fully, you know, discount that from happening, but I do think we will see RC next week. So we should be seeing that. It seems like Apple is just on a roll with these Monday releases. And I would say that we should expect it on Monday again. However, this is where it gets interesting. So Apple has said for months now that we're going to be seeing iOS 18.4 in April. 
So if we get the RC on Monday, you know, the next Monday is still in March. Yes, it's close to April, but it's not April. And Apple has specifically said April in, you know, their website and, and places like that. So that makes me think that either we're going to see an RC for two weeks, or maybe an RC, then an RC2, and then a final on the week of April 7th, or we see the RC next week, and then maybe the final release on April 1st or 2nd. Maybe it's not a Monday release for iOS 18.4, the public release. So we'll have to wait and see. It's a pretty weird scenario, honestly. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But nonetheless, I would expect at least the RC next week, and then we can go from there. So that is iOS 18.4 beta 4, a relatively minor update, which is always expected for a fourth beta. We're not really expecting to see a ton of features or changes added in a fourth beta. So that's everything here for 18.4 beta 4. I also don't expect many changes at all in the RC. We might see a couple of things added, but I think all the features are pretty much going to be what we saw in the first couple of beta. So of course, I will have my big video coming on 18.4 once the final version does get released. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, regardless of the, you know, really unexciting features and changes, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out when the RC gets released. And of course, when the final version gets released, I will have my nice big video for that one. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.